What is up, what is up? Welcome to episode 87 of the Degrees Couch Chronicles, DCC for short, or just that podcast with those two people. (laughs) I'm just fucking around. Um, Shit, before we get into everything, we like to give a shout out or more so promo, get you guys in tuned about the brand we have in front of you right here, a brand um, super... um, healthy organic owned by members of the podcast (laughs) and black people uh most of all shop glow nude yeah guys visit us on our website at www.shopglownude.com the products have already been shipped off and headed to jamaica as we speak so if you guys want any products in jamaica um all you have to do is Follow us on Instagram at glow.nude and information will be right there or you can click the link in our bio and order from our website. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Get involved, you know what I mean? Support black-owned businesses. I know you guys was really on it in 2020, so I don't know if yeah, you know like... I mean? everybody had a black square, you know what I mean? <laughs> and... Had their bi- bios, black, black Lives Matter. And honestly, guys, it's important to have ingredients that you can read and understand. I know um, it's been a spike in skincare lately, but what makes our products different is that there's products you could actually read and eat. So although it's from black people, it's formulated for everyone. So make sure you visit us our website at www.chocolownew.com. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. What should we start off with, man? We I don't have a lot of topics here. Um, where are we going? Where should we go with this? Um, let's talk about the first topic. Let's just get it done. Let's just start from the top. The art of revenge. What do you feel about revenge? Well, it's... I mean, it's not funny that this topic's on the board. It's just... <laughs> It's a coincidence because I was watching a movie yesterday, um, Abraham Lincoln, va- <laughs> Vampire Hunter. Uh, I just saw it like a while ago when it came out and I was like, man, this don't make sense. So I never watched it. Watched it last night with my girl and shit. And it's about him getting revenge on, I guess, the vampire that killed his mom. It's like the whole premise. He dragged that premise probably up until before he really became president. Uh, so, you know what I mean? So... The whole premise was him hunting vampires and shit, trying to find the vampire that killed his mom. But I think in revenge, you kind of get lost in in it because it starts off with you trying to get even. But then as you're, I mean, in the midst of getting revenge, you realize that it's not what you really want. So I don't know. like, you. Yeah, it's like if, if you're not willing to make this be the thing that's like, yeah, I'm going to dedicate my life to getting <laughs> revenge. Then it's like, what are you really doing? You know what I mean? Because, yeah, you're going to get revenge. You're going to get it if you do succeed. Then what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So What's the end result? And I kind of feel like karma plays her own game. It's not a team sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you let it go to karma, then it works itself out. Because how many times have you taking revenge on somebody and it ends up being worse for you you know what i'm saying you might go to jail the other person might be good (laughs) you know what i'm saying so i feel like when it comes to revenge it's just best to just let the universe handle that you know it's gonna get handled regardless yeah like don't even it may take some time yeah don't even put any type of energy towards it because like things just happen like things things are funny you know what i mean like it's like you not think about it like damn like that motherfucker owed me some money look how funny it is that he got robbed you know what i mean right, so it's like, like look at that i mean <laughs> <laughs> like things just happen you know what i mean so yeah. that's where i'm gonna live and you never want to be the one that everyone's gonna point the blame to when it comes to it yeah like they're gonna be like well he did have a grudge out because this that and the fourth so they're gonna trace it back to you anyway so you're better off with just letting shit rock. If you're really someone who can't let things rock, like I understand, you got to get it. But then in doing so, you're now putting energy towards like something negative. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's it doesn't do good for anybody. You know what I'm saying? So 
I feel like when it comes to a situation, although you may be angry and you want to take revenge, but take your emotions out of it and just try to think a little bit more logically because at the end of the day, the, things work itself out and everything always comes full yeah, circle. Yeah, definitely. But that's that on revenge, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you dig in two graves with it. That's, all, that's the moral. Yep, dig one for yourself too. So. Mm -hmm. It's going to consume you. Yeah. Um, what's, what's our next one? So, mad people... Um, mad people. Like, mad people like to talk about how kids is not their goal. You know what I'm saying? They kind of make it like a thing, like, as far as not wanting to have kids. So, my, my question is, I know if everybody doesn't want to have kids take that out of it what's your end goal like you know what i'm saying what do you see for yourself furthermore it may not be kids or may not be family but what else like you know what i'm saying i feel like it's self it's self um what's the word self fulfillment right. you know what i mean it's because i understand those people you know what i mean like who don't really want anything to do with just bringing another person into the world you know what i mean it's it's more than just that too like you take on the responsibility of another human you take on the emotional cat you know what i mean there's, there's so much more than just having a kid i feel like people who have made the decision to not i feel like maybe their end game is self-fulfillment like they want to be happy with who they are and die happy with who they are not having to do deal with somebody else or deal with a family or like people really depending on them because people People, if you if you leave it up to them, people will do nothing all day. They will do nothing all day, and they will accomplish nothing all day if you leave it up to them. So I, if it's if it's like, I don't want to have a responsibility. I don't want to have to deal with anything. Then it's yeah, it has to be self fulfillment. You want to be happy with yourself and enjoy your life with yourself and not deal with people. Because if it's not family, then that's what it has to be. To me, I just feel like it's all a front, like because. There ain't no way niggas is just going to be like, at least I don't got kids. Yo, you don't know how much it's so stressed. Like, how many times people say it so much as if, like, it's almost being forced upon you. You know what I'm saying? Like... What, not having kids? No, wanting fun? to have kids. Like, it's like people walk around and they say so much about not wanting to have kids as if, like, I can go on, like, a meme page and all of it is, like, at least... Well, Fuck them kids. Fuck the baby dad. Like, like, what the fuck? Like, what? People, people have had bad experiences with kids. That's Do you feel like it it's the family dynamic? You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's, it's, it has to be a deeper issue. You know what I'm saying? It can't just be like, oh, I see this and I don't want to have kids. Because if you grew up in a home that was loving and well caring, kids wouldn't be such a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I said, I feel like. It's the experiences. They were in bad experience or witnessed bad experiences. Maybe they're old. Maybe they grew up in a bad experience. So it's like, wow, I would never want to put anybody in that predicament. So I would never. But do you mean, does that mean you don't trust yourself to? It's everything. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust who you hook up with to have a kid with. And maybe you're just not ready. People don't want to have to deal with a mistake you know what i mean if it that, is a mistake that leads into the next topic in a sense right when it comes to a relationship how well are you guys screening your partners you know what i'm saying because when it comes to having kids as if you don't you don't trust the person right enough to lay down and have kids what's next you don't trust them enough to marry what's next you don't trust them enough to live with them what's next why are we getting into relationships that we're not being completely open and honest and 100% with these people? It's kind of like a pointless bond. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't feel like they're relationships. You yeah, I mean? like... They're not... They're, by the def definition term, relationship, two people who genuinely care for the well-being of each other, I don't feel like that's what it is. It, it gets brought up because maybe, like, a lot of people meet people on the internet now. So, like... You saw her picture, you liked it, you hit her on the DM, it's like, yo, let's meet up or whatever. Yeah, duke it out, you know what I mean? And then it's, it's that's what it is. It's more so 
people hooking up and then what happens of the hookup is what happens. You had a baby or things didn't work out, you know what I mean? But more than likely, a baby happened. So now you got baby mama drama, baby daddy drama, and y'all was never really in a relationship. Take the the baby situation, prime example, perfect example. It, it's a lot of people getting into situations that are, it's like a long, a lifelong situation. You know what I mean? Like it's, you it's, can't just erase a person. We yeah. have a person now. It's, so. it's, it's very like the way the world is now, it's very diff. It's mad confusing because I feel like people miss the idea of what the talking um, slash dating phase is supposed to be. That don't even happen no that, more. That's supposed to be an exchange of, it's like a, um, a contract, right? So we're negotiating at this point. In five years, I see myself getting married and getting a house. Where do you see yourself in five years? If our goals don't align, then we shouldn't be talking. You know what I'm saying? Let alone have a baby. Y'all niggas want to have a baby off of, oh, double type of picture. You look cute on in Cabo on vacation. Oh, uh, you look good in these Prada shoes. So yeah, that's what's common happening. interests. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what happened, though. Know? whole human beings are coming out of it and that creates just a negative depiction of what a family should be nowadays the definition of a family it's like it's kind of broken at this point because a lot of people are not taking the time to say i truly know this person instead of just like um simple common interests because yeah common interests gets you in the door but future goals and like plans is what like Pretty much sets a foundation for a healthy relationship. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like yeah, like I feel like we blame social media for everything. No, but, it, but it, only because it, it, is. It, it's, it, it is. is. It is to blame because back in the day, you know, what I mean, that, yeah, this this little saying. Back in the day, you never knew. You you don't know who fucking Rachel is over there in in right. Wisconsin. Right. I can know who anybody is. I can just go on my phone. I can find a new person. That's not even right. within my 15 mile radius, you know what I mean? So I feel like social media made it easy for you to just reach out and grab anything. And now you're just grabbing something and you're putting it in your pocket and then you're taking it out of your pocket, throwing it back <laughs> out in the wild. So it's a lot of people not really forming genuine bonds with people. It's just like, it's just scarred souls, man. I don't yeah, know. Just, just scarred souls. Exchanging, like it's trauma bonding. Yeah, like, yeah. And. Not for nothing, I can't stress enough how important it is to have, like, these awkward and weird and, like, uncomfortable conversations. You kind of have to have them. Like, I feel like when you have these conversations, it further eliminates the need or, like, yeah, because you guys think every guy cheat, but it, the need to, for a guy to cheat. Like, if a guy is sitting, sitting you down and saying, oh, these are my fantasies, these are my wants and needs, it... And you for and you fulfill them. I don't. I can't imagine why he would step out in the relationship. You know what I'm saying? But people are just so dismissive and um, what's the word? Well, yeah, people are just so dismissive in general when it comes to a relationship that like there's not a lot of proper and yeah proper communication. I should say. Yeah, I feel like once you're you're comfortable and you're communicative in what. You both want whether it's just like yo let's just have this be a friends with benefits thing like if you if that conversation isn't had off rip i feel like like it, things get messy and they do because people don't really have these conversations people don't have growing up conversations they really their, don't like somebody they met off instagram they don't have those conversations it's more so like yo come over come over and it gets done and then that's it so i don't know i feel like it's going to always be the case, especially for this generation of people, people in now or in their 20s and 30s and dating. And it's like that you don't understand relationships when it comes to um, like building an actual family. You know, what I mean, something you can be like, oh, I'm proud of this. Yeah. So that's that's that on that. You know, what I mean, I feel like there's a lot of work to be done socially. Yes. And emotionally. But. Anybody, I, I feel like probably above 20 at this point. Exactly. Just to bring it back to like what it was, I guess, just to to get back to proper bonding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not just something off of a common interest because interests don't last long. You know what I'm saying? People evolve 
yearly or monthly or weekly. Even. Every day, out, by the hour. <laughs> yeah, so... I'll be different in 10 seconds. I'll be different <laughs> after the break. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, do a little better. You know what I'm saying? Make proper bonds. Like, actually build with people. Create love bonds instead of just quick connections that just simply fade away. You know Have what I'm a saying? Have a five-date rule. You know what I mean? Take exactly. it back to... Act like a lady, think like a man, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not, 90 days if you have to. It, it, Form a real relationship. Yeah, exactly. Take time. Like, there's literally no rush. You guys are rushing to be a quote-unquote meme and goals on Instagram when these people legit, like, be messy themselves. You know what I'm saying? So just take your time. Don't let Instagram or social media in general influence your decision on your dating life. Agreed. But uh, after all that, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a break right here. This is a beat by me, J Degrees. Enjoy. All right. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope you enjoyed that, though. I don't mind why we're laughing. YouTube will know. Um, and by that, subscribe to the YouTube. God damn it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need, I need the listeners to reflect <laughs> on YouTube because it don't reflect at all. People look at the YouTube like, damn, like, like 30 <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> the freaking audio is like over thousands of people. Yeah. Like, so we need that to reflect, man. Get us to a thousand subscribers. All right. Go to YouTube. See, see what it's really hitting for. Yeah, it's, man. Trust me. I spend at least three, four hours <laughs> every night. Like, <laughs> make it worth something. Sheesh. But anyway... Let's get into more of our topics for today's episode. Um, let's get into duality and double standard. Yes. So the meaning of duality is an instance of opposition or contrast between two concepts or two aspects of something, a.k.a. dualism, right? So my question is... Yin and yang. Yes. Do you... For all you people who don't understand <laughs> stuff. Uh, do you think... That in order for the world to be, like, you know, normal or sane, do we have, do double standards have to exist? Because, I mean, we have light and we have dark, but they don't coexist at the same time. But in this world that we have going on right now. Yeah, an eclipse. Like, do, an eclipse. <laughs> do double standards need to exist? I feel like certain, certain double Sorry. And we're talking about relationship double standards, right? Like or, or men and women and whatever. Men and, men and women. Like, for example, if if I'm mad at my dude and I slap the dog shit out of him, <laughs> niggas is just going to be like, oh, she's crazy. She's wild, right? But if he mad at me and he slapped the dog shit out of me, what are we saying about him? Not good things. Yeah. But you're I going like, to jail, my yeah, guy. Like in that situation, I feel like, and I might be wrong or, I mean, I'm throwing this up in the air. It's an opinion. I feel like when it comes to being compulsive and reactive Active physically, some men might have more of a composure on women. That's why a lot of times men will just let it slide if they get smacked by a woman or whatever. Because it's like, yo, I understand my strength. I understand you're upset. And you might not have the control or the composure to hold back. So I'm going to let you hit me. It's all good. It probably didn't hurt anyway. You know what I mean? But I feel like in any other instant, of course, it's going to be a situation. Because you're now looking at the men like, yo, you're obviously stronger than her. Like, why would you do that? Like, in that case, yes. It needs to exist because men are physically stronger. But, but I feel like it makes the world better in cases like, like say if a man and a woman go on a date, right? And the woman covers the check. I feel like the men in that, the man in that situation is going to feel bad only because as a man, you're looked at as someone who provides and you're someone who takes care of things, financial, whatever. So it might not rock in that situation. So maybe next time the guy needs to pay. So sometimes I can understand it, but I feel like it needs to be on a level where like it, everyone needs to feel comfortable. So, right. you know what I mean? You you should rock with double standards and duality where the parties feel comfortable. So like if you have the money, but you're on a date and you want to pay, maybe wait. 
You know what I mean? If you're upset with your guy, you feel like hitting him, maybe you should express your upset another way. And if you can't really hold back, by all means. But I don't. I will never want to say that a man should be able to hit a woman. Like that's not gonna. No, be no, okay. no, 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 no. That's that's not where I'm heading down. What I'm saying is this. It's like. We get mad at double standard, but we kind of have to understand why they exist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some that's what that's exist, that's yeah. what I'm cha- that's what I'm trying to say, right? Because when it comes to a woman, women get mad all day when a guy's like, "I don't want a woman with too many bodies," right? Yeah. But then we say, "Oh, it's okay for a guy to have that many bodies," but in reality, when you think about it, how many guys? is going to be comfortable with knowing that mad niggas done test drove his car. You know what I'm saying? In that in that case, yeah. Like, I feel like when it comes to women, too much is on them to be perfect. So I feel like the double standard on that should probably be lowered. Like, everybody's human. Women and women too, so... So what if she has twenty bodies, fifteen bodies? It's like it, I don't feel like me personally. It's personally, it shouldn't matter. But I feel like it has a lot to do with how comfortable you are and how comfortable your partner is with who you are and your past. But I feel like a lot of men and women too, they look at women as like, like a like. A woman is a lock. A man is a key. <laughs> like, that's as simple as I can put <laughs> yeah. it. You know what I mean? So if you're a lock that has multiple keys, then it's like, how useful is this lock? It's not going to lock anything. <laughs> but if there's a key that can fit into millions of locks, it's always seen as more valuable. You know what I mean? It's the kingdom of hearts key. Right. So I feel like that whole scenario and that whole analogy on women has messed up everything when it comes to being equal and i guess duality but i don't know it's up in the air it's 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 really confusing because people to apply whenever like whenever and however like i saw this thing on instagram where it says that um people argue about splitting the bill but get married and and want all the guys money you know what i'm saying so it's like Mm, what are we doing here? You can't just pick and choose to apply it whenever. You know what I I'm mean, saying? I mean, in the marriage contract, if not a prenup, it says that, like, we become one person. So but you, it's you, like, you... it's more so ours. That's why you get the last name. But, I mean, uh, like, I don't know. Double standards will always be weird to me because I feel like, uh, it's not like they shouldn't exist, but it's like, all right, you're a woman and I'm a guy. That's the only difference in our humanity. It's like you're a you're a human male and I'm a human. I mean, you're a human woman and I'm a human male. Now, only because you're a woman, these rules apply to you, and only because I'm a male, these rules apply to me. To so be honest, I don't feel like it should be like that because oh, you have a vagina and I, I have do a penis. though. I do. I just feel like to be honest, let's let's be real though. We're woman. There's woman and there's man, right? We don't need to do the same things. You understand what I'm trying to say? We don't, and and there's things that make a woman different, and there's things that make a a man different. Some obvious, some not. And I feel like why try to put ourselves in place of a man as in in, in in like in a sense of a competition? Yeah. It's like oh, well, a guy can can do this this and not be um considered a hoe. I can do it too, and I should the same shit should apply to me. When it really shouldn't, like, because why are we doing this? You know what I'm saying? Why are we having this back and forth competition yeah. when you're a woman, he's a man? Let's just live in our differences. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm I, saying? I agree, but what are you going to do? Because you know I mean? it's it sounds simple, but it's not. And it's been a battle since the end of time. You yeah, I mean? like it's 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 crazy. Like this whole I know people are gonna kill me, but this whole feminism thing, it's 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 fucking insane to me. Like wh- I feel like people have that phrase and that ideal mixed up. Feminism is 
equal rights for everyone. It's not about females. It might have geared that way over the years, but if you look it up, it's equal rights for everyone. Right. Men and women. So you can be a feminist if you want equal rights for men. You can be a feminist if you want equal rights for women. You can, you're a feminist because you want equal rights across the board. Right. That's what it is. Everybody's skewed and think it's, oh, <laughs> rights for women all day. Fuck males. Nah, it's, it's, it's equal rights. For, look it up. I'll put it up. It's right. equal rights for humans, period, bro. So let's, let's change the narrative on fem- feminism. Yeah. But anyway, Moving let's on. move on. We yeah. literally have so much more to get to. Um, <laughs> let's talk about common practice embarrassment and how to simply fart in public, how embarrassed we get when these are normal bodily functions. Like, why do we feel embarrassed by these things? Like, there's people, there there be women in the woman's bathroom being... <laughs> Farting? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're afraid you to can't fart. You know, fart? <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> why are we afraid to fart or let the noises of our poops be heard? <laughs> Nah, but for real though, like it's I feel- being scarred as a kid. How <laughs> how how embarrassed were you when you farted and everybody heard it and it's like, oh, you farted. She farted. It was her. I heard her fart. So it's like, yo, bro, like, yo, it happens. And I'm always like, you know me, like I'm I, I don't care about nothing. So it's yeah. like, I'm always gonna be like, yeah, I farted, bro. Like, what are you gonna do about it? You gonna fight me because I farted? <laughs> Like so, I feel like you should be comfortable with you, who you are, what you do, and how your body operates. You know, I mean, there are people like crazy people who are like really adamant about not letting it be known that they don't they don't burp. Oh, I don't burp in public. Oh, I don't chew. I don't talk with my what I'm chewing. I mean, this common etiquette practice, like I said, it's not etiquette to fart in public. Like you have to step aside. <laughs> it's, it's literally not etiquette. But if you're comfortable with yourself and you don't care, then yeah, let it rip like a baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I just want us all to stop being embarrassed by these normal things. Like yeah, yeah, a lot of normal. these things are normal. Like periods are normal guys. Farting, pooping, peeing. It's normal. Like let's stop being embarrassed about these little things. Like it's so crazy how niggas be hiding condoms at the store. They be, <laughs> they be going to the clerk like, can I get a condom? It's like, <laughs> It's like, bro, like, we know everybody has sex. We know people yeah. get their periods. Stop hiding your pads. Stop hiding your tampons. Stop hiding your condoms. Like, be free with these normal things. Like, definitely. And, um, yeah, just be comfortable with who you are. That's what it really jots down to. That's what yeah. we're really saying. And, um, shit, I feel like we have one more of these wildies. You wanna, you wanna have, uh, honesty? Get that in before we. No, we spoke about honesty. Oh yeah, right. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into uh growing up emo and being Jamaican. <laughs> what? What is that? Check it out. So, <laughs> so we obviously spoke about moving from Jamaica to upstate New York and how much mm-hmm. of a culture switch that was. So much that we somehow got embedded in the emo <laughs> music. You know what Bro. I mean? Like. We were listening to My Chemical Romance. We were listening to Linkin Park, Green Day, and like really <laughs> being Levine. emo, you know what yeah, I mean? So like, bro, that was tough, especially being Jamaican, because it's like, what? It's such a weird, weird thing. For me, it, it all started when our first Christmas here, I got a radio. My dad got me one of those, like, um, I doubt they exist anymore, but these little stereo boxes. And I used to let the radio play at night, and I used to wake up... Listening to I Walk the Lonely Road. <laughs> My shadows are. If you guys know those songs and you guys are feeling the, feeling the nostalgia, let us know in the comments or whatever, man. Or what was your, like, Brink High Point favorite emo song of the years, 2000 and, I guess, 5 to 2008, Eight? maybe? Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I used to religiously listen to wake me up when september ends oh, man, bro. So <laughs> literally memories, every day bro. yo so it's crazy memories. man so much memories that's but shout out to that thing. like we was emo like yeah i'm just like thinking about it it was so weird like i ain't never listened to no rap yeah no rap or rock it no, was all yeah. dance hall or popular hip-hop 
But when we got to upstate <laughs> New York, oh man, mind blown. Like, what is this emotional music? My why do I feel sad? <laughs> my, my playlist definitely changed. It yeah. went to Avril Lavigne, Green Day, like we said. Uh, um, what is it? What 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 are they? My Chemical Romance, Panic Party, at, yeah, Panic, Panic at, at the, the Disco. Disco. Oh my God, Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> And, and mind you, like, we knew not of these artists prior to being in America. So it was such a, a culture switch. I'm yeah. glad it happened, though. I feel like it had a lot to do with my influence, music influence, the type of things I liked, the music I enjoyed. So I wouldn't okay. take it back for nothing. Sticking with music. Back into the music take, man. Yeah, here we go. Let's get into it so we can get out of here. Um, New music from SZA, I Hate You. Yeah. She said this is the first of many. I think she might be dropping some singles. So Oh, that's lit. Sh- shout outs to that. I'm not sure about an album. You know these big artists, especially big as SZA, might take a while, but I think Sizz- this song went number one. Yeah, it went number one quick, like within mm-hmm. a day or two, which is nuts. So shout out to SZA. Yeah, and we we got a, a album that dropped on the eighth, December eighth, from Russ. Oh he has the crazy lyricists, not rappers lyricist i'm talking about styles p i'm talking about jada kiss i'm talking Ooh. about members of griselda that's lit yo. i'm talking about pat Poos. i'm talking about pat snoop, Poos? snoop dog wow I'm talking about ransom from tde i'm talking about sahai the prince so literal lyricists are on this album from russ so shout outs to russ from sea caucus grew up in atlanta but he from jersey so Shouts to that. I feel like this album can go either one or two ways. No, nah, I listened to the whole thing. It slaps. Oh, it's lit? It All slaps. right. All right, then. So you heard it here first. So I'm going to give it another listen. I'm not the biggest Russ fan, so don't take it as, oh, you just champion for us. This is probably the second album I've heard from him. I don't know how yeah. many he dropped. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan, but shout outs to this album. He has people that I fuck with. Joey Badass, another one. So yeah, check it out. And there's some crazy features on there. I feel like Joey Badass haven't had like a song or album in a minute. So that yeah, he's would be been interesting. In his, he's, yeah, he's been in his acting bag, but this album slaps. So check it out. You heard it here. <laughs> I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's all she wrote. Like, subscribe. You know what I mean? Listen on Anchor. Subscribe on YouTube. We want those numbers to jump all the way up and reflect our real listeners. Right. So yeah, get in tune. And as always, we're at war with ourselves. We're at war with everyone outside. Stay safe out there, guys. Peace.